But that's impossible because it doesn't happen that way. You finally go get everything you want. You find the partner you wanted. You have enough money. You put everything that you always desired around you. And then all of a sudden something goes wrong. You're diagnosed with a breast cancer. You're diagnosed with a health issue. You lose your son. There's a revolution in your country. There's an earthquake. There's a natural disaster. Something happened and you lose some of the things that you had gained. And then suffering comes back. So the conventional belief system is not going to do you any good because we can see what's going on. You cannot hang on to the things that you acquire, including your body. Everything is going to change. And sometimes the change goes your way and a lot of times it doesn't go your way. So there must be another way to find peace and happiness. It has to be somewhere else because it's not in acquiring objects. They only bring temporarily happiness when you get them. Yes, it's great. I finally got the car I wanted and I'm happy for a week or two or three or month and then I'm tired of it. Great, I finally found the partner that I wanted. How long does that last? Maybe, maybe it goes all life. Maybe it happens to be all life, you have, but the relationship changes, the sex changes, the dynamic changes, the other person's desires changes. So it's temporarily. And we're not interested in, in temporarily events. I mean, obviously, you can choose to do that, but we're interested in what is going to keep us happy forever. I want permanent happiness. That's what I want. I want to be at peace with myself all of my life, not conditionally. When you begin to do the work, and you begin to notice the power of the heart, you begin to become aware of the presence. This is the presence of God, which is inside you and it's surrounding you and everybody else. It's the being. When you connect with your own being, at this place, then what happens with the right guidance, you can observe your mind. You can see that there is a stream of thoughts passing through your mind. Your mind is always having thoughts passing through it. Now, I'm going to use a metaphor to help you make this very simple to understand. You are the observer. You're the watcher. You're the one who is aware. A human being, their job is to be aware. You can never not be aware. You're aware of the sounds outside. You're aware of your computer. You're aware of your phone. You're aware of the sirens of the um, police cars or ambulances or whatever on the street. You're aware of everything. So your awareness. You're also simultaneously aware of your thoughts, that you got all these thoughts going through your mind. But you're not always thinking. There's not always thoughts passing through your mind. If you were your thinking mind, then you could never be able to come and tell me that Zarathustra, my mind is driving me crazy. I have so much thoughts. Because if you were your thoughts, you wouldn't be able to, to know 
you wouldn't be able to distinguish because that's who you are. The fact that you can observe your thoughts and you can make a report that my mind is very busy, it's driving me crazy, is because you're not your mind. You're separated from your mind. You're somewhere else. So here's the mind running and here you are. So you may say, okay, Zaratustra, what do I do now? How do I free myself from this busy mind? Actually, with the right training, it's not really that difficult to separate yourself from your mind and not to be the victim of your thoughts anymore. Because your thoughts can take you to some really dark places. And it can create a lot of suffering for you. So, imagine of the blue sky. The blue sky is always blue. The only reason the sky is not blue is because of the clouds that are passing through it. But let's say you have like three months of gray weather. It's cloudy every day. There's all kinds of storms passing through. There's hail. There's snow, there's thunder. But after three months of really bad weather, what happens? The clouds go away, and when you look into the sky, you see the sky is still blue. The sky never come and tell you that I'm not going to be blue anymore. I'll be light blue, or I'm going to have some scratches on me, and I'll have some pink in me. The sky always remains blue no matter what happens, no matter how many storms go through it. The storms and the clouds can never touch the sky, but they can clutter it and you don't see the blue sky. Similarly, the same thing. You are the awareness, you're the watcher, you're the witness. You are witnessing your thoughts. The thoughts are passing in front of you, but you're not your thoughts. You're the one who's observing them. You're the one who's aware of them. You're the one who's witnessing them, but you are not the thoughts. So, if you try any kind of system, any sort of training to stop your mind, then you're going to fail because you're using the mind to stop the mind. You may come say to me, Zarathustra, I'm really suffering from a very busy mind. My mind is driving me crazy. I have all this fear, all this anxiety all these suicidal thoughts, I hate myself, I don't love myself, I'm afraid of a lot of things. So then I would say, why don't we step back and bring you into the heart, bring you to where you're connected to the divine self, yourself, and from this place, you can observe the thoughts. So what happens is we shift your attention. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring your attention inwards to the source of the thoughts. Where do the thoughts come from? So we're going to follow your thoughts back all the way to the source. And when you come to the source, or let's say from the mind to the heart, and you come back to this place,